On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1990. We're going to be taking a look at Robert Cray, and he's going to be performing right next door because of me. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I am going to be jumping into this one about halfway through, so there's going to be a link to this performance video in the description below, so you guys can click on that link to watch it the whole way through without me interrupting it. But let's get Robert up on screen and let's see how he gets on. <laughs> I can hear the couple fighting right next door Their angry words sound clear to peace and more Around midnight I heard them shout, faithful one And I knew right then the axe was gonna fall It's because of me It's because of me Heard him shout, who is he? She mumbled the moan. He said, baby, don't you lie to me no more. I'm listening through these thin walls in the silent shame. As she called out my name, I was right next door. It's because of me. It's because of me. It's because of me. It's because of me Oh, she was right next door And I'm not such a strong persuader Now she's just another notch My guitar She's gonna lose a man That really loves her And in the silence I can hear The breaking hearts I'm just going to jump in here. There is so much in this performance to be pointed out, but Robert Cray is one of those artists that just has it all, and that's very much what Eric Clapton said about him, and he has supported Eric Clapton on tour, by the way, 2006 to 2007, and Robert has pretty much played with everyone, including Stevie Ray Vaughan on my T-shirt tonight. It was his final performance that Robert was part of that show, but having all of this ability on the fretboard and vocally just puts them at a totally different level. Because if you turn away from the screen and you imagine this just as a band, you can imagine a guy walking around the front of the stage with a microphone and he's just got a great voice and he's a designated lead vocalist. And then you might imagine the guitarist. They've got a great lead guitarist and he's just amazing as well. And it's a great band being pieced together from separate musicians but Robert just does it all he's got such great ability on the fretboard such great expression but his voice is so good it's just in a league of its own when we start talking about guitarists that sing Robert Cray is one of those guys that plays guitar and boy does he sing because he's got the range there he's got the soul and the emotion the feel Everything that he communicates through his guitar, he also does with his voice. So just to get the guitar out and have a quick run through what's going on here, we've got the chords which are going to be 
all in C minor, pretty much with our key and our playing. There's going to be pentatonic shape one, but you don't want to stay in that shape one box, but we'll get to that in a second. So chord wise, we've also got some upstrokes coming in as well. Don't underestimate the importance of groove in this performance and the feel of that groove because it is so tight throughout the whole performance. Everyone is spot on with that groove and the drummer, the bassist being in the pocket just give you that foundation to lay everything on top but everybody is spot on here. So we've got that C minor and then we're going down to an E flat. B flat and then we're going up to an F so with that final F it isn't a chord that sounds particularly emphasized as a major up at the top even though it is because of some of the lead notes that are being played over the top of that but you might want to just stick to the fifth and maybe the octave And then we work our way back to our C minor that we started in. Just for reference as well, when Robert gets into his lead guitar, we've got in the background the A flat, the B flat and the C minor going on. There's a little bit of jumping with the timing as well. So it means that you're not starting the next chord at the beginning of the bar when we've got the C minor. got a little jump down like that so in slow motion we're going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so we're jumping in on the and before we get to the one of the next bar and then we go straight to the and there's a little hop up again to the C minor so all together that is That kind of thing. Just before we get into the lead work, I want to mention the fills that are going on throughout this performance with Robert when he's playing rhythm. So when we're getting this, he's always throwing in a really tasteful fill like that and he might go and have a little slide up and all of this is going on while he's singing. So he's doing so much just all at the same time. He's also got this really controlled vibrato that he applies to his lead work. Also look out for the vibrato that he applies to his vocal because it's very similar. It's controlled all the time, but it's a slow frequency. His voice really does sing in every sense of the word, but his guitar sings as well because of that similar expression that he's putting into his guitar playing with that same application as vibrato as he does vocally. Quickly getting into the lead going on here and just giving you an outline of what's going on because many people when they start playing lead guitar, they start playing that pentatonic shape one which we've been through millions of times on the channel but when you start to progress you want to move out of that box if you can and what you'll find the top blues players doing is sliding from one part of the shape to the next so we're playing exactly the same notes that's the important thing to mention here so when I play through shape one like that I can also move down on the A string instead of coming down here I'm moving that first finger down two frets on the A string and that is a huge move especially when you're talking about blues because now you've now got your blues note which is really easily accessible and it means that you can slide from one part of that shape, even though it's still pentatonic shape one, the notes haven't changed, but the way we're playing it has. And you could hear the way that I slid up to now get into my pentatonic shape one standard box position here, but using that same slide, but reversing it, you can start to hear the blues just 
peeking its head out from behind the fretboard because of the way that we're just utilizing this shape. So once we've got the basic concept of now sliding into that pentatonic shape one, you want to apply exactly the same principle to the next octave. And now move up with that third finger on the G string and down. Like that, and you start to get used to that same slide. It's the same thing that's happening twice when I go. I'm just doing the same movement, but moving it down a string. So once you start getting used to that, you can then. That. It's just placing in the next note of your minor pentatonic scale. So when I'm going. That's in standard shape one. Because I'm sliding up, the slide gets me to where the first finger would have been, that note. So when I go. Same note. And now I can place in the next note in the scale with the second finger. And this is something you'll hear all the time. In fact, I just played it as an example of what Robert does with his a little fill that he threw in there, kind of like that. It's something that's used all the time, but great to get used to in order to expand that pentatonic shape one. Because once you're up here, you can then move back down again. And you can apply exactly the same principle as we've just done to the B string and the high E string. So now these notes here, are exactly the same as going like that in that standard shape, but I'm just playing it higher up. And that's literally extending the pentatonic shape one. And I know that a lot of people get confused with pentatonic shape one and then the extended pentatonic shape, but the confusion probably lies in the fact that they see people playing like this going and they assume that that's got to be the extended shape because they're going up the guitar, they're extending the scale. But once you get used to it, you'll realize that the guitarist is playing pentatonic shape one, but just sliding down on the A string, which also gives you access, a tone below our root note, if you want it. And here, if you want to extend it again, you can do. And that's just doing the same movement, but now three times. So we're going through all of those octaves. We're going. Like that, exactly the same thing happening three times over. And the great thing about that is you only have to learn the muscle memory once and you've got all of your. You can just copy and paste it and all of the lines you can think of in one position, you'll be able to play it over at least another couple of octaves higher. So when we resume the video, I know that we haven't seen a hell of a lot of lead yet, but listen out for that little, little slide down back into that pentatonic shape one, exactly the same thing on that A string. And once you know what to look out for, you can then start to decipher where Robert's going with his lead. It's important to mention that every guitarist has the same notes on the fretboard at their disposal, but it's how they play them that makes it stand out and will make one player sound different to another player. And having said that, when we're talking about Robert, listen out for the way that he's sometimes applying a really wide vibrato. It's so controlled all the time, of course, but really, you know, we're pretty much going into that semitone above with vibrato. And another thing to mention is that when you're playing on this kind of tone, the tone that Robert's got here is super clean. So it means that there's nowhere to hide. Your technique's gotta be spot on. You have gotta be muting the strings that you're not playing. 
Another thing to look out for is the way that Robert is picking this because sometimes he's playing it a little bit softer dynamically. Listen out for that change at the end of this performance where he just brings everything so low dynamically. But getting into the lead, you can hear the amount of punch that's being put into each of those picks. And that really wide vibrato as well. But let's get Robert back on screen and we'll watch it until the end. Hey, break, I hear a pack, say goodbye. Yeah, I can hear him slam the door and walk away. Right next door, I hear that woman start to cry. And I should go to her, but what would I say? It's because of me. It's because of me. It's because of me. Young Bob. Oh, she was right next door, and I'm such a stormless waiter. She was just another notch in my guitar. She's gonna lose the man. There we have it. A couple of things that I want to mention. First of all, the importance of having keys in the sound, something that you might have noticed earlier on in the performance is the way that Robert is just tweaking his tuning on his high E string. And while he's doing that, you've still got the rhythm and guitar playing in the background, but the keys fill in so much of that sound. So it means that Robert has a little bit of leeway in order to check his tuning and not worry about playing all the time. This is the thing to take into consideration when you're watching a three piece, for example, where there's only one guitar that is responsible for the whole rhythm. And if that drops out, then it's going to be a nightmare. So here we've got this full band sound and what a band it is. Another thing to look out for is the way that Robert is constantly with his right hand, just cupping the volume with his little finger. And you'll be able to see that when he's playing his lead and getting quite aggressive with it. He'll then just that tiny movement on the right hand and see how dramatic that difference is. You can hardly hear it just because I've taken a little bit of volume off. If I'm taking off a little bit less, then we hear a little bit more of the lead and you know how it works, fully open. 
it's now going to pop out more. But Robert goes all the way down to pretty much where I went to that first time at the end of this performance so that it's really quiet, really understated to the point where you can hardly hear it and the whole band are bringing it down at the same time as well. So dynamically it's so under control which is exactly what you want to listen to when you're hearing a live performance. Just before we finish I want to draw attention to Robert's voice from a range perspective because when he's singing in the verse at the beginning of the song we're pretty much around this kind of area so that's an E flat 3 and by the end of the song we've gone all the way up to an A sharp 4 so we are into the male tenor range and we're covering well over an octave here something I mentioned about great singers having the ability to span an octave with their vocal and Robert is easily covering an octave here an octave and a half when we're talking about where we started there and here we're already above where we would be in the verse vocally that's where we are in the verse and that first finger go an octave above and that is going to be our high note, that A sharp. So this A sharp 4 and then A sharp 3 underneath. If we were just spanning the notes that Robert's covering here with his voice, we'd have... So quite a span once we get up to that A sharp 4. And just this... If we were spanning the notes that Robert has... If we were spanning the notes that Robert covers vocally in this performance, we'd have... So a hell of a lot of notes in there. And this is why it's just on a different level, because Robert has such great vocal ability, such soul to his voice, and keeping it in chest voice the whole time, he's going all the way up to that A sharp 4. And he does have the ability to flip over into his falsetto and a light head voice sound. I have seen him do that in other performances. So he's got total mastery of his vocal cords, but also of the fretboard. And that is why so many other top players have such great things to say about Robert, because he is right up there from every single angle from a performance perspective. But thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep the suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!